two men walk into the octagon, one walks out. Well, the referee also walks in, and then if there's a big old melee at the end of the fight, a whole bunch of people are in the octagon. So, hello, welcome to Octagon St. Laveau. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this show, we talk about um, MMA, UFC history, and sometimes we talk about past press conferences. I'm a novice, I don't know too much about it, but I've got MMA, UFC fever. And then at other times, we'll talk about fights to come. Today, I'm not sure how I'm going to start out. I think that what I really should do is just start out with Mr. Chuck Liddell. We've got a big old fight coming up this Saturday night. John Bones Jones against Alexander the Malagufson and Chris, Christine, Chris Soiburg, uh Santos against Amanda the Lioness Nunes. But I think we're going to start out with Mr. Chuck because the last episode, um, it was Ladies Night Part 1. Uh, this episode is Ladies Night Part 2. Last week's subtitle was uh, Chuck and Tito. Uh, Chuck and Teal too. So our subtitle tonight, uh, today is uh, Chuck. Chuck Liddell was the first MMA legend to catch my eye. Randy Couture was the second one. Uh, they're both simultaneous in a way, but Chuck definitely uh, took my breath away as my first legend. Um, he's a former light middle, middleweight, have, uh, former light middleweight, um, oh, pardon me. I'm looking at his and the Tito's statistics. Uh, Chuck, actually, his nickname's the Iceman. He is a UFC light heavyweight champion. Um, he's had uh, 23 victories. Um, he grew up uh, looking at Kung Fu theater. Uh, he was a street fighter. He had a black belt by the age of 16. He went to... Uh, Cal, uh, California Polytechnic, got an accounting degree with honors, but knew that um, his heart lay being a fighting man. He was actually a football player also in college as well as a wrestler. Um, John Lewis was his trainer, his first trainer, and he taught Chuck Jiu-Jitsu. And Tito, or Teets, his famous rival also trained at the same time. And I think May 15th was his first fight, 1998. It was a late heavy rate route, and he fought Jose Lando Johns Pele. It was a bare knuckle fight, and he won by decision. That might have been his first or second fight. So Chuck's been around for, uh, for a while. Um, both Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell were managed by Dana in the uh, very early days of um, UFC. Um, he also knows Kung Fu, Koi Khan Karate. He's a black belt and he's got a developed grappling technique. Um, he's 22 and uh, his kickboxing technique is incredible. So uh, his first fight was Jose Lionel Jones. Um, his second fight was with Jeremy Horn. Uh, he was choked out by Jeremy. His third fight was UFC 31, new ownership. Uh, and he fought Ken Kevin Randleman. Um, and he stunned him with a left and a, left and a right. Uh, he also fought Pride and had a TKO, but I don't know who he, got, who he gave the TKO. The Tito Ortiz and the Ken Shamrock fight had to happen before... Uh, Chuck could face off Tito. And it's well known that um, Tito didn't want to fight Chuck because Chuck would always get the best of him in sparring. Um, so when Chuck fought Randy Couture, Randy was 40 years old and he out-wrestled him and outstroke him. Out -struck him. Um, and then I think after that, he was able to fight Tito. Now, my notes... They're, they're kind of neat, and they're written kind of hurriedly. I really just want to get this all right, but um, I know for sure that Tito, who is the people's champ, was certainly scared of Mr. Chuck, the Iceman Liddell. Now, this la one of the reasons why I'm talking about Chuck this episode is because he and Tito had a knockdown drag mail on Tito's side a couple weeks ago, 
And despite the fact that, you know, Tito gets made fun of because he has a head shaped like a melon and nobody likes him. And this, this third, this third fight, um, Tito walk, Tito comes in and people are booing him. You know, they don't like the shape of his head, whatever. And Chuck walks in, everyone's happy. I mean, Chuck is, Chuck's the man. So, uh, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, the fight should have happened because Chuck came out of retirement. And Dana White, and I just want to say on the last couple episodes, I've called Mr. Dana White, Dana Cook. I didn't mean to do that. I was getting him mixed up with Dane Cook, the comedian. How could I get these two guys mixed up? But Mr. Dana White was very disapproving of the fight that happened between um, Chuck and Tito. So I've done so few breakdowns in my uh, newly uh, MMA fever that I've had, but I did watch, um, I did watch this particular fight between Chuck and Tito. So the first minute I didn't see any contact and Tito kicked out a couple times and I thought the kicks were lame. And then he gave Chuck a right hook and he kept backing Chuck up. And then uh, Tito did a roundhouse kick and Chuck got knocked down. And then I heard the audience chanting. And then Cheeto, uh, after that, he tries to hit Chuck, but he almost falls down. Like, he falls down as he's trying to hit Chuck. So the guys and their announcers and all respect them. I wish I had their job. They must have a lot of fun. But someone, one of them said this is a great fight. It wasn't a great fight. It was a lame fight. And it's not because Chuck Liddell's not a good fighter, but it just wasn't a good fight. I don't know if that's Tito's fault or not. So um, after the guy, after one of the announcers, all respect said, this is a great fight. And again, I'm saying, no, it's not. Tito, uh, gets, uh, Tito gets Chuck on the chin and then on the nose twice. And the fight was over. It was first round. So, uh, after it was all said and done, and this is why I love the sport, and this is why Chuck Liddell's the man. Chuck posted uh, uh, his thoughts about the fight on YouTube. What a class act. He said, my respect to the fans. Thank you all for your love and support. I know a lot of people have talked about the fight. These are my thoughts on it. Props to Tito. I'm a fighting man. Uh, I thought long, hard about getting the ring. I just want to do it. I'm a fighter. Love and respect to you all. Uh, that, this is my path. I might be on a different path, and I hope you support that too. Chuck Liddell is a class act, okay? Um, I can't say anything. I, all I can do is say good about Chuck Liddell, but all I'll be doing is repeating myself if I say it. So I just wanted to uh, give you a little bit of my wobbly MMA UFC history that I'm learning. Okay, now let's go on to, um, I think we're gonna go on to the guys before we hit ladies night. So now we're going to go on to the main event, UFC 232, John Bon Jones and Alex, Alex Amala Gustafson. All right, so this is the second fight between these two men. And I checked out um, uh, who else was fighting that night. So we're going to go down that. We're going to get that out of the way really quickly. So 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, main called UFC 232. Jansen and Gustafson, then Cyborg, Chris Cyborg, and Amanda Nunes, women's featherweight. Michael Chiesa and Carlos Condit, Corey Anderson, Il Latifi, Chad Mendes, and Alex Volkenvoski. On the preliminary card, we've got Andrei Orlovsky versus Walt Harris. And I think this is Fox Sports 1, 8 p.m. Hope I got that channel right. Andrei Orlovsky, Walt Harris, Megan Anderson, Kat Zagano, Douglas Silva, DeAndra Andrade, Peter Yan, Ryan Hall versus BJ Penn, lightweight division, and then for let me call it UFC fight past 6 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Andre Ill and Nat Wood, Uriah Hall versus Bevan Lewis, Sia Behez Yada versus Curtis Melinda, 
Montel Jackson versus Brian Cahiller. Now, I had everyone's stats there, but that would have taken too much time. Hope you all check it out. Uh, I'll be catching it on the flip side, I think, a little bit after. I have, uh, I have yet to, uh, you know, do a pay-per-view, really, and one day I will. All right. So, um, because... Here we go. All right, because um, this fight is coming up, uh, Gufferson and Jones, it's the second one. I watched the first one. And so I think that was, it's either my first breakdown, my second breakdown, but I think it's the second breakdown I ever did. And it was kind of scary how I was checking it out. Let's see if I've got it. All right, yeah, I've got a few notes about right here. Okay, I watched it Christmas Eve around noon, and uh, they both looked evenly matched. I found out today that Gustin's reach is actually longer than John's, but they're both pretty evenly matched. Uh, the fight was a fight I, I didn't see anything out of the, out of the ordinary, and then I saw this, um, a spinning knee kick, and then I saw a spinning elbow kick that Jones did that looked absolutely lethal. He did it a couple times, and it was so fast. I, I don't know, again, too much about MMA, but that was the first time I saw something like that uh, that I can remember, and it made me gasp. Um, Mr. Jones is a, he's a good fighter. Uh, he comes off cold, uh, talks in monotone. Uh, he's pretty cold, but what a fighter, man. I mean, uh, I guess that coldness, I guess to do those vicious spinning knee kicks and the spinning elbow, the spinning elbow thing, that comes from a place of uh, almost sociopathic violence. I'm just saying. Uh, I've tried to like the guy, the guy's unlikable, but what a fighter, all right? So as I'm looking at my notes, I can't find my stats and tail the tape on Gufferson. Can't find my tail the tape, but we're going to be checking out the fight uh, next week or a couple weeks from now. Uh, it's Saturday night, as we know, and it's it's going to be lethal. I do have some notes on the presser, uh, which uh, you know Jones is in a white shirt. But he's got white shoes on, which ever since my Seinfeld days, that's a no-no. White shoes? Sorry, dude. And uh, Gustin, he's like in a gray sweat, sweat shirt. And uh, they both seem pretty relaxed. So they get out there. It's the, the presser's over. They get out. And they're standing. And then, you know, Jones gets in front of Gus. And then Gus gets in front of Jones. And then Jones shoves him. Save it for the fight, dude. You save that for the fight. Uh... Look them up and down all you want. But again, these are fighters like, oh, I'm really going to like a boss John Bone Jones around about how he's not supposed to shove someone around. Right. But anyway, it looked um, looked cheesy and just I can't like the guy. I don't know. Um, uh, I'd like Gus to win. I think Jones is going to win. He's, he's a lethal fighter. Jones, uh, Gus is hungry. Or Mahler's hungry. But... Um, I don't know. I, I, I got to go with Jones. Now, a friend of mine very kindly said to me today, oh, you said Khabib was going to win. I said, you're very sweet. I didn't say that. And he kept telling me, you called it, you called it. All I said was, whoever puts the pressure on first is going to win. Um, in this case, because Joan cheats on steroids, he's a cheater, and he finger pokes guys, yeah, he'll probably win by decision, but my heart's with Gus. That's all I can feel. That's all I want to say about that. Now we'll go straight to ladies' night because even though the guys are going to brawl it out, the gals, this is going to be a monster of a fight. All right, so we talked a little bit about this last week. Um, let's see. I know I got my gals' notes here somewhere. Um... All right. 
yeah, it's uh, as ladies go and as, um, oh, pardon me, I think me notes right over here, huh? Nope, let's see. Okay, here we go. All right, so I have notes from last week to back up what um, I want to say today. But these notes today are literally the tail of tape. So this, this Saturday's fight is for the world's featherweight title, okay, the female world's featherweight title. So we've got Christine Sidebook Santos, Justino, at, Justino Santos, as the front runner, and we've got Amanda Nunes as not not so much the front runner. And I haven't figured out the statistics yet, but Christine is leading by negative 260, and Amanda is trailing by plus 220. So I'm going to find out what that means uh, by the next episode. Um, Christine doesn't bother with submissions, according to the Bleacher Report. She's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. She's had 20 wins, 17 by knockout, none by submission, and I believe 11 of those were first round finishes. She's lethal as a fighter, okay? Um, she's the type of fighter that when she smells blood, the fight's over, all right? Uh, fighting Holly Holm, one of the all-time greatest strikers who knocked out Ronda Rousey, that was a challenge for, for Chris, okay? She's 5'8", she's 33 years old, weighs 145 pounds, and she has a 68-inch reach. Um, she TKO'd uh, Yana Kuniskaya a minute ago, who was 3'3 three, three and 18. Um, and Chris trains out of Chris Cyborg Fitness Camp. Um, her stance and striking style are orthodox Muay Thai, She's a UFC featherweight champ. She participated in Strike Force and Victva. She's a champ. She's a brilliant Jiu Jitsu brown belt. A 10 first, 10 first round finishes, not 11. Um, her killer instinct is superb. She's an evolved striker. She's got a strong inside clinch and famous for body locks and lateral drops. And she is a no nonsense grappler. All right. Um, now I'll look at Amanda's record. Her nickname is the lioness. She's a bantamweight champion. Uh, she's had 11 of 16 careers wins. Uh, pardon me. She's 16-4. One 16 loss four. She's had 11 of those 16 career wins have been via knockout. Okay. Amanda has a punch that is incredible. Uh, she's got great footwork. And she won the UFC title by a rare naked choke. Now, I'm learning those wrestling terms as I go along. If Chris Cyborg, according to Chel Sonnen, is the baddest woman alive, Amanda Nunes is the champ of the world, okay? Uh, Chris is bigger, but Amanda is going to give her trouble. And I don't know if I'm quoting Chael Sonnen there or myself, but... I don't think Chris has met anyone like Amanda before in the octagon. All right, so Amanda's been studying karate since she was four, and she's been a boxer since she was 16. She's 5'8", just like Chris. She's 145 pounds like Chris, but her reach is two inches longer. She's got a 70-inch reach. Her last win was uh, over Raquel Pennington by TKO. That was uh, May of this year. And she t trains out of American top team. That's her camp. Her stance and striking style is orthodox Muay Thai, UFC bandweight champ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, brown belt in Judo, 11 KOs, 11 first round finishes. She's got underrated footwork. This is to quote MMA junkie. Improved jab, strong inside glitch, and heavy ground strikes. This is called pressure, 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 whoever. This is a pressurized fight. I'm learning that from Chael and, and a couple other people. Whoever puts the pressure on, Amanda's going to put the pressure on. Chris is going to put the pressure on. So uh, Amanda called Chris out. Um, and I think that Amanda understands that she is about to come up against a very formidable opponent. Um, I, 
I think Chris knows that too. My bet's on Cyborg. Uh, I love Amanda. She's a lioness. I'm a Leo. Who, who doesn't love the lioness? Who can't love Amanda? Always upbeat, always positive. Um, I'd, uh, if I could train with Amanda, but I'm nearly a lowly fencer. I'm not a fighter. But I think Christine, I think Chris is going to win. Chris is just bigger. She's more powerful, but Amanda, she's just like that Conor Mack. Conor McGregor, you can't count, you can't count her out, you can't count the lioness out. Um, my best wishes to everyone who's going to fight Saturday night. There can only be one person walking in the octagon, and there can only be one winner walking out. But um, I wish I could do what they could do, you know. Um, but I'm glad that they're doing what they're doing, and we want them to keep doing what they're doing. I do not... I would not want to have an MMA fighter bag my groceries. That's not that's not their their place in life. They're supposed to be doing this. Okay, so on that note, that's it for me. I'm your hostess Betty St. Laveau. This is the fifth or sixth episode of Octagon St. Laveau. I hope you can check out uh, this fight. Please uh, also my MMA professors, Mix My Wampery, I'll Pack of the Source, Mind Smash, Uncle Chael, um, uh, MMA on point. There's so many great MMA professors out there, and because of them, I am. I've got novice fever. I'll be giving it to you until uh, until I get sick to my stomach and can't take anymore. Until then, be nice to each other. Uh, happy New Year, and um, don't watch any bad fights. Until next time, bellas, ciao.